Greetings, folks. Rod Machado here. In ground school, most pilots learn that at higher angles of attack, the wing throws its lift backwards a tiny bit, thus tugging slightly aft on the airplane in the direction of drag. And we call this induced drag. Now, what's not clearly understood is why induced drag decreases in ground effect, ultimately allowing the airplane to float on landing and be less likely to climb on some takeoffs. So, let's see why this is. Here we see an airplane in cruise flight while showing the free airstream moving directly above and below the wing. Lift is represented by the tall vertical blue arrow which is nearly perpendicular to the relative wind in the free airstream ahead of the wing as shown by the horizontal blue arrows. Now let's increase the angle of attack and watch what happens to the relative wind in the local vicinity of the wing, in other words directly underneath the wing. The airstream now curves upward ahead of the wing and downward behind it. Notice what has happened to the relative wind directly under and slightly ahead of the wing as represented by the red arrows. It now tilts downward slightly as a result of an increase in angle of attack. Said another way, when you increase the wing's angle of attack, you change the direction the relative wind in the local vicinity of the wing moves, tilting it downward slightly. Ultimately, this change in the wing's local relative wind is responsible for the production of induced drag. So let's explore the aerodynamics behind this process. Now here we see an airplane approaching to land at a slow speed and large angle of attack. Pay particular attention here to the relative wind just under the wing as identified by the red arrows. The relative wind has bent slightly downward due to the effects of the wing's downwash. Adding to this downwash are the wingtip vortices which move outward from underneath the wing and rotate upward, inward, and downward behind the wing. This adds to bending the relative wind downward in the local vicinity of the wing. Earlier I said that lift is perpendicular to the relative wind, which means the relative wind in the vicinity of the wing as shown by red arrows. As the angle of attack increased, the local relative wind bent downward slightly, which means that the wing's total lifting force is now acting slightly aft instead of vertically as shown by the vertical green arrow. And when the wing's total lifting force pulls aft on the airplane, it induces a slight rearward pull in the direction of drag. Therefore, lift that acts like drag is known as induced drag as shown by the yellow arrow. Now watch what happens as the airplane enters ground effect. As the airplane approaches the runway, the upwash and downwash ahead of and behind the wing straightens out a bit. And it has to because the runway is a solid surface and air can't flow out of or into a solid surface. As a result, the local relative wind directly underneath the wing straightens to align with the relative wind further ahead of the wing. This results in the total lifting force tilting forward to remain perpendicular to the newly straightened relative wind. Now the wing is throwing less of its total lift rearward, resulting in a decrease in induced drag. No, the total amount of lift produced by the wing isn't changing here. The only thing that's changing in ground effect is the aft pull on the airplane by the wing's total lifting force. In other words, the component that's called induced drag. It has disappeared or diminished in ground effect. And this is why an airplane entering ground effect experiences a decrease in drag and is more likely to float on landing. In other words, too high of an airspeed during landing could cause you to float like a butterfly, then sink like a bee, ending in a landing off airport property. Using the same principle during takeoff, as soon as the airplane lifts off, there's very little upwash and downwash, so the total lifting force essentially stands vertically, producing very little induced drag. However, once the airplane lifts out of ground effect, the upwash and downwash around the wing increase, resulting in the total lifting force tilting aft slightly, thus producing induced drag. Now, if you attempt to climb out of ground effect without sufficient speed, the increase in induced drag might cause your airplane to sink back to the runway, much to your dismay. 
And if you run off the runway, the FAA may show up and ask what you were sinking or something like that. Greetings, folks. I'm Rob Machado, and I'd like to introduce you to my newest course titled The Art of Takeoffs and Landings. Now, can you name one thing by which other pilots can and will judge you as a pilot? Well, it's certainly not your ability to dress well because I know some of you are on the other side of this camera right now wearing plaid with a propeller hat. Don't deny it. <laughs> not a good combination, I might add. Instead, you are most likely to be judged by your ability to land an airplane. And here's where I can help. Whether you're a seasoned pro or a newbie in the cockpit, there are some essential principles to taking off and landing that you, well, might have forgotten or just need to learn. And that's what this course is all about. In it, you'll learn all the little secrets that I've acquired over a four and a half decade span of time teaching others how to fly airplanes. And I'm speaking of techniques such as hmm, sampling the response, the runway expansion effect, the landing time machine, the runway sweet spot, the super easy glide path evaluation technique, and so on. There's one thing you can count on here, other than the fact that you should never show up at the airport wearing a propeller hat, and that is, this will be one of the most comprehensive, enjoyable, and useful e-learning programs that you'll ever purchase on takeoff and landings. And it will help you increase your takeoff and landing proficiency. So, have fun, laugh and learn, and may you always land as soft as a butterfly with sore feet. Mm -hmm.